Welcome to this special report on C-Soup Radio. Now introducing award-winning investigative reporter Judd McElvain. This interview is based on the true stories of the last surviving member of a three-member CIA contract team known as the 231 Club. These three covert soldiers followed orders which sent them around the world to deliver weapons, money, train American allies, and sometimes eliminate its enemies. For the first time ever, a contract killer for the CIA speaks out about his assignments and the loyalty and love he had for his country and his team members. Now, some of the dates and names and places have been changed in order to protect uh, those who were his associates and the family members who are still alive. And his team called him Cowboy because of a nickname he picked up in an Arab country. To answer a question in my mind, what does a young man from a small California town do to get connected with the CIA and a contract killing team. How'd that work? Well, Chauncey and I met at one of my lectures in, uh, God, I think it was UCLA. And I would do lectures from time to time about pain control, subconscious conditioning, you know, things on... Uh, well, what was your educational area? background that you do lectures like that? Well, I started out as a hypnotherapist. I then moved on to my own process. I got a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in psychology. I was state licensed as a family therapist. So that's basically the educational background. But it started long before that in, uh, curi- uh, with my curiosity of, uh, uh, of the mind and how it worked. But uh, because of this lecture, uh, uh, Chauncey and I met. And he was very interested in this subject matter, and we became friends. And after a few months, he asked me about uh, joining uh, him in doing different assignments for our government. And it was, you know, simple documents I could pick up in other countries and, and or deliver to other countries. Did he tell you up front that they also eliminated people? No. All I knew that it was basically shuffling uh, documents back and forth. Okay, tell me a little bit more about the background of Chauncey and Michael in this 231 Club. Uh, Chauncey Holt. Now, Chauncey had a very interesting past. He came from the Alleghenies of Kentucky. He was very violent at that time. While he went to grammar school, he was carrying a 45. I mean, it was very violent, even for the children. About the age of 10 or 12, he started a uh, high wire act because one of his relatives owned a mud, what they called a mud circus. He later started training with a uh, man that would do stunt work with aircraft, and he was doing uh, wind, wing, wind, <laughs> wind walking. Uh, How about wing walking? Wing walking, walking excuse me. And uh, the guy would teach him, in exchange, how to fly an airplane. Uh, later on, he got into some trouble, Chauncey. After joining the Air Corps, Army Air Corps, he ended up in prison, where he met some people that were very well connected to the uh, what we would call the mob, and later ended up working with Meyer Lansky. He was a fine artist, which led him into becoming one of the best forgers around. Uh, Michael. Michael was, as I said, a Marine. Michael was uh, trained in the 50s with machine guns, explosives, handguns, just many different types of weapons, and was just great when it came to tactics. He was always there for you. Anytime you needed Michael, all you had to do was pick up the phone and call, and you would never hear him say, well, what's it about? He would always say, I'm on my way, and he would be there for you. So it was, uh, those two, two men were, uh, you couldn't ask for better when it came to partners, especially when you're putting your life on the line. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak out and tell us this amazing story. I'm Judd McElvain. The Troubleshooter, and you've been listening to a special report. Thank you again for listening.